Loose Screws, also known as Screwballs 2, is a 1985 teen sex comedy directed by Raphael Zielinski and starring Brian Janese, Lance Vonderkalk, Alan DeVoe, Jason Warren, Annie McAuley, Cynthia Bellevue, and Mike McDonald. This movie sure started early. Really early. Damn, they're not even hiding this shit anymore. Man, you can tell this guy hates himself. It's time for summer vacation, except for the four idiots that are getting called to the principal's office. That never happens in any movie that features the last day of school, and it sure as hell isn't going to happen in a movie called Loose Screws. The names of this quartet are Brad Lovett, Steve Hardman, Hugh G. Rection, and Marvin Eatmore. Yes, this is the kind of writing we're dealing with here. They're sent to Wadsworth for summer school at Coxwell Academy, which is promptly invaded by these douchebags. Are you guys making a rape pact? Brad pulls some BS, which is full of very suggestive talk. I think this is illegal as hell. So many mullets. Ha <laughs> ha! And those male students, that will be the last time you see them until the end of the film. This aged great. Skeleton antics ensue and holy shit, it's an actual staff member. Principal Arsenal drags him to the office and reads him the riot act, which is pretty much the same role he had in the film Recruits, that we have previously reviewed. It wasn't very good either. New staff member Mona Lott shows up with some yada yada between her and the principal. As well titled this Double Meaning, The Movie. They go to their room to unpack and here's your obligatory he eats because he's fat scene. The girls in the dorm decide to go for a smoke but oh no it's angry pseudo German woman. Then Miss Von Blows gets high. Fifty minutes into this movie, here's a montage. Our gang of assholes go to hang out on the beach. This place is pretty lax with keeping students on campus. Look behind you, dumbass! They then start a competition to see who can bed more ladies this summer. Hear that? That's cringe. Brad makes his attempt by going drag to get in a girl's dorm. Then Marvin goes to a health club to rack up his points. Even in the 1980s, I'm pretty sure you could get arrested for this. Back at the school, Brad is playing the long game but gets cock blocked by required bath time. Hey kids, it's gratuitous nudity! Brad ends up in the tub, but Nikki walks in and wants to jump in with him. Who does this? C 
convenient. They wash each other and wind up sharing a bed due to overcrowding. I guess I found my new ringtone. Busted. Only in an 80s teen sex comedy would a guy doing something like this make a girl interested. But honestly, the toilet lid gag was a good spot. Steve arrives at Mona's house for tutoring in full douche mode. See? He hops in a shower with Mona and he's out of there running into the principal who's also looking for some ass himself. The guys have another meeting and come up with a plan to get in Mona's pants. That is a transforming watch. How do I know? I had one in the 80s. WHEN I WAS FUCKING SIX YEARS OLD! Meanwhile, they get invited to a beach party and here's another fucking montage that can also double as a fucking musical sequence. What kind of school is this? All these kids are free range. They split off and then they get it on. Better add this to the scoreboard. At this point, they might as well have called this, that's what she said, the movie. Steve BSs himself as a tennis instructor, leading to 20 seconds of tennis, then they get it on. This film's written like porno. Good. Here's some nerd shit. I guess these assholes create something that dissolves swimsuits, meaning nudity and sexual assault, ending with the principal jumping in with his robe on. Fuck this shit. Mona goes for a massage with Brad making his move. That's racist. He massages her to orgasm and gets busted. He should probably be under arrest at this point. Hey, have you guys ever seen Animal House? No one dries their hair like that. A dog shows up and the usual hilarity ensues. Do it! I'm sure that camera will be some kind of plot point. Steve hooks back up with his married tennis student, and yep, you guessed it, she's the principal's wife! Animal House! And he sneaks out. I'm surprised they're not calling this computer Hal 6969. They need a computer to figure that shit out? You were literally wearing a shirt that said that. He's going to fall through the ceiling. How can they not hear or see him? Called it. They go to town to party and is he going to give the keys to a valet or is he just movie parking? Also movie table placement.
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the USA Up All Night Poet Laureate. So he's taking her out to a fucking strip club? I hope those guys are paying, otherwise this is a horrible business model. They get busted and are finally expelled. Good! Movie over! Get even! It's not like he's being unreasonable. You guys were assholes when you walked in the door! It's the day of the big statue unveiling, and this is also the first time we have seen more male students than these four since the beginning of the film. Holy shit, looks like Bicentennial Man! Then we get some homemade porn. Also, how did they get the camera back? Did they pull some B&E? Also, how did they get the videotape transferred to 16mm so fast? The statue comes to life and starts pumping gas into the room. How do you know that's what it is? There's an assault and stripping on stage followed by an explosion where they all died. Oh dear lord, I don't think they're playing those instruments. Loose Screws makes a common teen sex comedy mistake by making the leads not adorable rascals, but assholes. All four of them. Actually, in this film, there are no likable characters at all. It's a collection of miserable movie stereotype people that you don't give a shit about. This is a horrible teen sex comedy that doesn't understand what makes the good ones good.